Alrighty guys, in the previous video we extracted the data of quotes and authors. So in this video we are going to be learning how to put that extracted data in containers called as items. Now why exactly do we need to put them in containers? Because we have already extracted the data, can't we just put them in some kind of a database directly? The answer is yes, obviously you can. But there might be a few problems when you are storing the data directly inside the database when you are working on big slash multiple projects. So scrappy spiders can return the extracted data as python dictionaries which we have already been doing right now with our quotes project. But the problem with python dictionaries is that it lacks structure. It is easy to make a typo in a field name or return inconsistent data especially in a larger project with many spiders. Because our quotes project is right now very very small, that's why you don't get these kind of mistakes in our project. So it's always a good idea to move the scrap data to a temporary location called containers and then store them inside the database. And these temporary containers where we are storing the extracted data are called as items. So we will be using this items.py file to create our item containers and if you look over here you can see that the class of quote tutorial item has been automatically created for us by scrappy when we created the project. Now we have a couple of fields inside our quotes underscore spider that is the title field, the author field and the tag field. In order to declare these fields inside items.py file simply you can write the name of the field and then you can type in scrappy.field. So we are just going to uncomment this up and instead of the name I'm just going to call it title and then I'm just going to copy and paste it two more times for the author and the tags. So instead of the title over here I can just write author pretty easy peasy and then instead of the title I'm just going to write tags over here and then I'm just going to remove this pass. Now we have declared the fields inside a class of quote tutorial item. Now we need to import this file of items.py file inside our quotes underscore spider dot python file. So that is pretty simple. We can just write from dot dot items. So this basically goes to this items.py file from inside this spiders folder. And from there we need to import this class of quote tutorial item. So we can just type in quote tutorial item and this is going to automatically import this class for us. Now over here inside this parse method we have to create a new variable. Let's call this variable as items. So this is basically an instance variable because we are going to be creating an instance of this quote tutorial item class. So we can just type in items equals to and then write down the name of the class that is in our case quote tutorial item and then we can add a parenthesis. So if you don't know about classes and objects this is basically a class and when we need to create an instance of this class then we just write the name of the instance that we want and then we can just write the name of the class and then add parenthesis. Now that we have created the instance we need to store we need to use this code tutorial items blueprint to store some items inside this items instance. So what we can do is we can write items over here and then instead of just yielding these uh, dictionaries over here we can just write the name that is the title and this name that we are writing inside the square brackets is actually the field name that we have given over here. So if we had put in titles over here we would actually need to write titles over here too. But it's just easier to make sure that you write the name of these items as the same as the name of the variables that you have extracted. So instead of calling them titles I'm just going to call it title just to make our work a little bit easier. And then items title equals to title and this is the name of the variable that we have extracted over here. Now instead of the author and the tags just like we have done with the title we are going to do it with the author and tags so I'm just going to copy and paste it two more times and then instead of the titles pretty easy we are just going to write author and over here to author and if you are following along you can just write it with me and just tag and over here we can also call it tag. Now just to make sure in items.py I have called this variable as tags and over here I have called this variable as tag. So this is not going to work instead of tags we can just call it tag so that this remains the same. Now instead of yielding all of these uh, key value and key value pairs what we can do is we can just yield one thing and that is items and this will make sure that all of our code is working properly and all of these items are being returned properly. 
So what we are going to do is we are just going to run this crawler once and make sure that everything is running properly. And then I'm just going to go through all of this code again so that you guys properly understand what is happening. Let me just run this crawler once. So I'm just going to open our uh, terminal window and I'm just going to go inside our code tutorial project. And over here, we are just going to write scrappy crawl. And then over here, we are going to write the name of our project that is quotes and then press enter and everything should be working properly. Let it run and if we scroll up, you'll be able to see that all of these quotes are getting scrapped properly. So what we have done is that inside this items.py file, we have created this temporary container known as quote tutorial item and inside that declared some fields. And then we created an instance. Obviously, first we imported our items.py file and specifically imported this class of code tutorial item. And after we imported the class, we created an instance called as items. And then we use the blueprint of this class to make sure that the title, the author and the tags are stored in respective proper containers. And then we just yielded the items. And this looks actually a lot more beautiful than what we were doing previously. That is just returning or yielding the dictionaries key value pairs. Now, if you have any confusion about this class and instance and objects or whatever I'm talking about, make sure you check out the video of classes and objects and uh, inheritance also, because that's going to help you understand object oriented programming uh, that I've added in this video series. But anyways, uh, now that we have made sure that our items are in proper containers, proper temporary containers, now we can move on to the third part that is storing them inside our database. So in the next video, we are going to use a very simple kind of a database known as a JSON format. So we are going to be storing all of our data inside JSON in the next video. So I'll see you over there.